Hello and welcome to Norton Live Streams. If you didn't know, these live streams are part of a series of streams we've been doing here at Norton uh, over the past few months and years. Uh, if you've missed any of our previous live streams, you can catch them on our YouTube channel. Uh, lots of interesting content on there, so please have a look at your, at your leisure. Now, um, before we start this live stream today, I just wanted to introduce you, if you've not done this before, to a little tool that we have uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, this Teams uh, uh, system that we're using today is called closed captions. So if you're watching from a, a non-English speaking country, you can open the closed captions of the instructions you see on the screen in front of you here. Uh, click on the icon and select uh, a translation or a rough translation using the, the Teams uh, platform of my, uh, my English language. Some of you English might want to do that as well. I think you can get English subtitles. Sometimes I talk a bit too quickly, so it could be a good idea. Okay, so today's subject is uh, core drills. Okay, so these little drills in, in the box here. So we'll be going through uh, all sorts of different interesting details about our new range of, uh, of core drills we have to offer to the market. Uh, but before we do that, I think it's good to have a quick look at uh, the uh, agenda. All right, so... As we said, core drills today, or sometimes known as an annular cutter, uh, we're going to look how to choose the best core drill for the job and how generally how you use these things. Um, we'll have a look at uh, who your experts are, who are going to be online today. Uh, what are they? What are they used for? Uh, what machines? Uh, why do you need a core drill rather than a standard twist drill? Um, we're going to introduce you to our new gen of core drills, and then we'll have uh, live questions and answers uh, at the end of... Uh, of this show okay so uh i think without further ado we'll skip uh, straight on to uh the start of our powerpoint have a look at who your experts are uh me paul gray i live right in the middle of england in uh, in cheshire i'm an application engineer for mro or maintenance and repair operations for for europe 30 years in manufacturing and 18 years uh in abrasive so uh, quite an extensive knowledge in of the manufacturing industry in general, but particularly in the abrasive uh, abrasive sector. And my colleague, my favorite colleague here, Francisco Cuero. I hope he's online. Francisco, are you there? I'm uh, here, here to support you. Yeah, I'm uh, here. I'm in Spain, and, and, and you can see the slide that I'm living in Spain. My English is not, is not as good as, as poor English, but better than uh, mine, I'm Paco, my come best. On. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm working for Sagoban for more than 25 years. And uh, now I'm the category manager for system components, and it includes the uh, annual cutters or core drill that we are going to, to show today. Great. Thank you for that, uh, Francisco. Um, just throughout this stream, you may refer to me, uh, you may hear me referring to Francisco as Paco. Uh, that's uh, his uh, better known name here at, uh, at Sangoban. So when I say Paco, I'm talking to Francisco. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Also uh, on uh, the live stream behind the scenes here today is Martin on production. So if you hear me talking to Martin, ask to zoom in on this, zoom in on that. That's the guy who's in charge of the whole production here today. So thank you very much for, for that, Martin, today. Right. Okay. So before we start, let's set the scene about uh, core drills. So we just want to tell you a bit more information, as I said, in the agenda of what are they, what they're used for, where they're used, what kind of machines are used on, and, uh, and some other details of our new range. But before we do that, I just want uh, you guys to have a look at the offer that we've given to you who have joined us live today, where you can claim your own free sample of one of our fantastic core drills and the center pin that it comes with as well, which is, which is really important. We'll show you why today. Uh, so if uh, you have to be on this live stream live, and watch it to the end of the demonstration. For those of you on YouTube, I'm sorry, that's uh, it's a recorded session, so that offer will not be open to yourselves. We'll publish the link at the end where you can request your sample. So those of you who are live, stick around to the very end of this show where we'll put up a QR code uh, and we'll also put the URL on the chat so you guys can uh, fill in a few details and claim your free core drill and center pin. All right. Okay, so, uh, so very nice, so Paco. Let's have a look at the PowerPoint presentation. I promise you guys, it's not many slides. I know we all like hate PowerPoint and really uh, when you're down there, but it's good for us to set the scene on there, isn't it, Paco, right? Yeah, it's your, it's your presentation, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. well, you, annual cutter, you can find it in many, many, many applications, in all metal applications, general engineering, heavy engineering, rail, yeah, for rail, we will use a special TST to stand carbide tips uh, core drill. We are going to see today high speed steel core drill. 
and this is used for aluminium, carbon steel, steel, steel plastic for all, all my, almost all material. Then uh, you, you, you can find this product everywhere and you will see how, how it's better and faster and cheaper to do holes with core drill instead of, instead of a standard twist drill. Yeah, so basically anywhere people are drilling big holes in metal, basically. It's as simple as that, right, Paco? Okay, thank you for that. Okay, uh, so what machines uh, use uh, with a core drill? Obviously, it, uh, with the machine you saw in front of me earlier on on the screen and, all, and the machine you see on the, on the right-hand hand side. So generally, they're used on, on magnetic drilling machines, all right? So they can also be used on different types of, of drilling machines, as can be seen on the, the slide here. But they are, you know, a different kind of machines and your, your hand drill, as Paco said earlier, what you'd use with your twist, twist drill. So much more, much more professional uh, bits of kit where they use these, uh, these core bits. They're generally, uh, you know, portable, most of them, uh, you know, so they can actually move them around because when people want to put holes, you know, the size of holes in steel that we're going to be doing today, they're going to be doing it in application. So uh, not always done in the factory. Uh, they do use them in the factory as well on a pillar drill. But a lot of times they need to be portable, and that's why we'll show you how uh, how we use the magnetic uh, magnetic uh, drill today. So, why use a core drill, Paco? Tell us. Yeah, that's the, it's very clear. We are not going to to remove all the material of the hole, just a groove in the periphery uh, periphery of the of the material. Then we will save money, we will save time, and we will make much more holes. We will make a minimum. From five to ten, uh, well, we have a test that our core drill. If you can make a 70, 70 hole with a twist drill, you can make minimum seven hundred with our our uh, core drills, and uh, much more faster. You don't remove all the material, and you will not need to the all energy, the all expensive energy, to remove all the material. Just a, a groove around. So we're not removing, if you're doing a 20 mil hole, for example, Paco, we're not removing a 20 mil diameter disc of material. We're just removing that outer uh, diameter of 20 mil. So just that small, small part of material. So uh, that's why it's quicker, right? Yeah, the, the, only, the only limitation is you, we can make uh, blind holes because you need to pass through because the, the ah, material yes. will live inside of the, of the, of the core drill. That is ah, the, so... only, the, only, the only limitation. So you have to drill through material, not just into material, to be able to eject the core that uh, that comes out, right? Uh, yeah, that's the only yeah. the only limitation. Everything else for me holds uh, through. That is perfect, perfect. It's that's really a good, good point. Thank, Thank you for that. that. Uh, we have a uh, okay a brusher with all the all the range. We have three three, three kind of uh, core drill. One is the highest speed core drill. Is the most popular product because it's to work for steel and usually. Mag magnetic uh, magnetic drill is used in magnetic uh, material like a steel and is the most popular is the product we are going to see today we have also the cobalt alloy that is for harding material and, uh, and harding material and then we have tst that is specially designed for very very hard material as rail this is very popular in rail market to make holes in rails we are going to focus today in high speed steel that is the most popular uh, probably it will be 70 or 65 or 70 percent of, of the of the application yeah these are the the part of the of the core drill, we have the shank. We have there are three kind of shank: universal, fain, and and weldon. Weldon cover 90% of the application. This is the most popular. It has two flats, and you will see how how Paul will fix the 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 shank. Well, the the core drill on the machine. The the flat help to to fix the the shank on the on the machine. Then they have the flute. Are very important tool. To leave uh, to eject the chips, they are uh, quite big. The 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 flute are quite big. Then it will it will be easy also to to remain holes in, in in a sticking material like aluminium because the 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 flute allow to to go out all the all the chips. And then the cutting edge that it, it has a special design that uh, that uh, optimize the the cutting action of the of the core drill. Then we need as complementary product the pin. We, well, we, we can use one pin each, maybe 10, 12, 20 uh, core drills because the pin is just uh, to center. Yeah, it's not. It's not actually used in any. It's not actually used in any aggressive action of cutting. The pin. The pin is really to to guide you. So if you if you want to draw in. Uh, if you want to draw. Uh, uh, if you want to drill a specific hole in in a place 
on, on your steel component, like on this one, where you can actually see I've marked an X on the bottom there, if you can see here. Perfect. Thank you, Martin, for the lovely close-up there. So if, you, if you're using one of these big machines like this, you can imagine it's quite difficult to, to move this machine into the location to, to be able to drill in exactly that spot. But what the center pin does, it sticks a little bit out uh, in front of or, you know, uh, below the, the, the cutter. So you can adjust the machine, lower it down and check that you're actually going to drill in exactly the right spot. Also, what the pin does, it acts as a plunger because it's spring loaded inside this machine here. And when the pin is engaged, it actually releases the cutting oil as well, which drips down the pin and then lubricates the cutting area as well. And when you take the pressure off, the pin comes back because again, it's spring loaded and it seals uh, from where the oil is coming. So it stops the flow of oil. So it's really, yeah, it's, it's twofold. It's to guide you where it's going to be. It lets the oil out. And then thirdly, uh, what is really important, once you've drilled through the material, as the pin is spring loaded, it ejects or hopefully ejects the small disc or the core that's left inside the, inside the drill, which you must make sure every time you drill a hole that you get rid or eject that uh, that core each time yeah. okay that's your job right yeah just a tip say about the cutting oil if you add a little bit of cutting oil just in the in the material you are going to make the hole it will help in the initial in, in, in the initial action of cutting yeah it, it, normally, it normally comes through pretty quick to be honest with you but this is the cutting oil we're going to be using today the ceo uh, 500 from the one bond by sangoban perfect for applications where you need uh, some oil to lubricate uh, uh, your your drilling area so so right so i think what we should have a start on the practical now so we've we've done the the theory which was pretty quick and painless i think so let's have a first have a uh, first of all have a look at the machine we're going to be using today so this is a is a core drill as you can see it has a magnetic base so you can see this big uh, black lump uh, on the bottom there it is an electromagnet so when i place this uh, this drill in the area i can switch this on and it will actually glue itself or magnetize itself to the surface and uh, be absolutely solidly fixed it is however dependent on on the thickness of the steel that you're actually applying this drill onto the thicker the steel the better the connection will be the, the more material there is there for the magnet to attach to the thinner the steel uh the less uh that the magnet will be will be stuck or, or that adhesion will be will be will be less in effect i'm sure you can understand that if it's thin material it's got less material to to pull its magnetic effect uh, on so sometimes on thinner materials we have to be careful when we magnetize it how much pressure we put how fast we infeed uh, the cutting tool uh, on this material we should be okay for about seven or eight millimeters but it could be a bit thicker if we really want to push uh, we really want to push the, the material through okay so that's the machine it's got a heavy duty motor on here and very important on this machine is variable speed okay so why why would that be important uh, for, for a core drill well it very much depends on the size of hole you're trying to drill uh, it kind of makes sense really so the smaller the diameter the faster we can rotate the core drill the bigger the diameter of the hole or the core drill the slower we want to go so we want to try and maintain the peripheral speed of the cutter to a, to a certain level so for example here i've got two two drills we're going to look through today we've got a 20 millimeter drill here in this case uh so i'm just going to put that on the on the front of the assembly so a 20 mil core and then we're also going to be using a uh, 30 millimeters as well okay so you can see them two there you can see the difference in the diameter of those so the 20 millimeter the recommended speed is anywhere between uh, 250 rpm to 340 uh, uh, rpm but on the bigger on the 30 mil or it's actually 29 mil to be exact the speed is uh, i think it's 200 rpm up to 245 so a little bit slower for the 30 mil than it is for the uh, for the 20 mil so that's to keep the same peripheral speed uh, of that drill uh, considering the diameter is increasing uh, increasing a little bit so i could change the speed on this machine to suit exactly uh, exactly what we need to do there all right so i think first of all let, let's have a look at how we mount this uh, this drill inside uh, inside the shank of the tool so i'll rotate the tool a little bit round for you guys today I'm going to make it more awkward for me to do but a bit easier for for you to see what i'm doing so here we have the drill as uh, francisco said we have the center pin which we want to take out of the case here. Now, remember, there are different length core drills, which you'll see in Paco's uh, catalog he showed you earlier. So you have to get the corresponding pin 
for the length of your of your of your core drill okay so what we must see is it's got to stick out the, the front there so you can see again if i go for this close-up we can see that pin sticks out there okay so all we do is simply simply slide that pin inside the hole and we're ready to go francisco you were saying something yeah yeah yes yes uh, yes to say that uh, with this core drill, we can make hole up to 50 millimeter you know, this is it does mean that that the, the deep of the of the hole can be up to, up to 50 millimeter. That you can make a quite thick, a quite thick holes. Yeah, quite a big hole. You mean 50 millimeter depth of cut, Paco? Yeah, you have yeah. there are two one for 30 millimeter depth and the other one is for 50. We have from, from 50 to 50. They are two to to the length of of uh, of core drills. Okay. So these these uh, quarters we're having today, they have the standard weld and shank on there, which is pretty much the market uh, market standard. So I have to orientate the flat spots with the uh, grub screws here. So we just insert that into the machine quite easily, and we tighten up the little hex screw, and the same on the other side. So now the drill is attached to the machine very securely. Right now we've got to orientate this drill onto the material we're going to uh, we're going to drill through today now this is not a light bit of kit so it's reasonably heavy because of the electromagnet on there so we can simply lift it up put it into place now before i magnetize the base which you must never forget to do when you operate this machine now i can adjust where i'm going to be drilling okay now i can see because of the center pin tells me where i am i'm exactly where i need to be where I marked the X earlier on in the day. So we mentioned about the cutting oil earlier on. So we have our reservoir on the side of the machine here. So while we're cutting, I wanna make sure we've got enough, uh, enough oil to do the job. So really simple to do, just open the top of there, pour some in, job done. Yeah, and in addition, you can put a little bit in the place for, for the starting, for the starting will be, will be better. Better. To be honest, I mean, it's difficult for you guys to see on this camera because we've been using this drill earlier. It's already got oil inside uh, because it's fed down the tube here into the cutting head. So already, even though I've put it into in place, there's cutting oil on the, the metal already, Paco. So yes, I know what you mean. It, it, really good. I mean, the, the, the purpose for the cutting oil, for one, it lubricates the head. Uh, so it's going to make you cut quicker. Uh, but secondly, it prolongs the life of your of your uh, of of the the, the the cutting face of the high speed steel uh, drill as well. You can cut dry; it's it will do it with no problem. But you'll be much faster and, and again preserve the life of your of your cutting tool by using the oil. So it really is worth the investment to do so. <clears throat> a little bit today, you may be wondering why we're not using this guard. Really, we should, um, in normal circumstances, have a guard in front of the machine here to, to take away any, any any swarf that's coming towards me. But very difficult, as you understand, to shoot a video with this guard on. So today we're being extra careful with what we're doing, wearing all the right PPE. I'm well away from the, this area where it's being cut. So we, we decided to take this off just so it's easy for you to view. Those of you using these in the field, uh, please always use with the guard just to be that extra, extra safe. But uh, we'll be very careful what we're doing today. So let's check we've got everything. First of all, let's switch on the switch. You see that light up? That means we're now magnetized. So I could pretty much lift up this steel with the core drill now. So you can see the power of that magnet in there due to the thickness of the material. It's not going to budge. All right. Unless we really, really tried to pull it off. I've, uh, because we're on a 20 mil drill, first of all, I've set the speed on about two, 280 RPM, so it's in the middle of the, the range where it needs to be. So I think we're ready to start. So what I want you to pay attention at is how, how quickly this can go through the, the, the steel. Okay, so we'll be going through this. Again, this is seven or eight millimeters thick. Um, and the feed rate for this kind of steel should be about 24 millimeters per minute. That's what's recommended, or an inch per minute. So we should get through this in about 20 seconds or, or faster. That should be the ideal speed to not push the core drill too much and obviously to get the job done as quick as we can. So we'll go now, Paco. Anything to mention or are we... Yeah, you are, you are right. No, we don't, you don't need to push, to push too much. Uh, the, the core drill will make the work. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right, off we go. Uh, 
yeah, we can see how easy how the chips go out on the flute of the of the of the cold rail, and uh, and it will finish the the war very 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 soon. Yeah, as 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 uh, Paul say, if the if the diameter is is larger, we need the slow a slower speed. For small diameter, we go to higher speed, and also for harder material, we go for a slower speed. Yeah, finish. I think that was pretty much twenty seconds actually, Tiana. If you bit back over, I think that was exactly. Again, I wasn't. I use a little tiny bit of force, but I'm not really pushing that thing through. Um, so now. Uh, what we want to make sure we've done is we eject the core. So I'm going to turn off the magnet now and bring the core drill a bit back. I don't think I saw the core drop. Ah, no, I did. Sorry, guys, I thought the core was still stuck inside the machine. So if we just have a quick zoom on that, that's the core that we've ejected from there. So it's okay. like a penny. Yeah, it's like a penny. So now we can go to the vending machine and buy some uh, some crisps and some Coca-Cola, right? So it's uh, no problem for us. But you see, what you can see from that as well, if we get a zoom in there, is the finish. That's one of the real beauties of the cord bit machine. Under here, there's no swarf. Okay, so that hole there, there's nothing, no swarf underneath. There's also no swarf on the top here or no sharp edge. You know, a lot of time with twist drills, because you're pushing them through, you end up with quite a sharp edge on there. And uh, uh, it's not so, not so nice, or you have to do some reconditioning. The core drill goes through it really, really nice, uh, nice and uh, and sharp. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll put uh, a bigger uh, uh, core drill in, and again we'll adjust the speed accordingly and show you even drilling a bigger hole than we've done here, the twenty mil. It's just uh, just as easy. So to make it easy for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this machine off here again, put it on the table. And we'll swap out that uh, that core drill for another. Yeah, you, you don't need to go to the gym with the, with this machine. <laughs> it's a good workout, yeah. I'm just going to rotate the the head slightly so it's easier for me to do. Uh, I'll put the magnet on, and then yeah, if you don't get the uh, the grub screws in the right place, it's difficult to get to with the uh, with the Allen key. So we've got them in the right place now. Take that off. So again, once these are worn or they're not cutting efficiently anymore, really simple to change out there. What we're going to do now is we're going to use a shorter one. Okay, so like I say, different tools for different jobs. So this one is the, uh, I think it is the 29 millimeters uh, uh, by 25. So you can see that on there if I put that. The, the other just, one was to make hole up to 50 millimeter. This one is to make hole up to 25. The, the total length is about 30. Yes. Because need a space, be, but the maximum is 25. Yeah. And again, because of that, because this is shorter, I need a different pin. Okay. And in and this just... case, in this case, we are going to make a hole in the seven or eight millimeter plate. Okay. You you can use whatever. Uh, of course, always the shorter is 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 enough. And uh, we can make hundreds of holes in, in in a sheet of seven or ten millimeters. We we can make hundreds of holes with the, with those core drill. Uh, we the, we may test it. We made, we made uh, eight hundred, seven hundred holes with this kind of core drills in in this kind of play because we don't remove all the material. I would say. Yeah, twist drills nowhere near that amount. They'd be blunt. Uh, be blunt for, before you know it. You'd be resharpening or sending it away. Yeah, yeah no we, 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 we can also resharpen in this this uh, high speed steel core drill if we need. But if we made maybe seventy or fifty holes with a with a twist drill, we will make seven hundred or five hundred minimum with the with this uh, core drill. Then the yeah. well, the cost per hole will be much more cheaper. So let's see where we're going to aim for this one. Just going to aim to the side of the hole we've already uh, already drilled, so we can have a look at those afterwards. So magnet on again, and now. We said this is a diameter of uh, 30 or 29 millimeters, so we're going to reduce the speed a touch uh, accordingly to, to around about uh, 220, 230 RPM or something like that, just to make it uh, a little bit better. So we're ready to go with magnets on. The oil is switched on as well. You can see it's dripping already, so we can start. Yeah, very easy, no pressure. 
the the cordy is is making the work you go you see the the ships the squad they are quite long because it's a carbon steel then the material you will longer or, or shorter but the the flute uh, of the core are more than enough to to let them go out yeah perfect perfect work i put a little bit more pressure on than i normally would on that to be honest with you just to see even though we're drilling a bigger hole there go we go through even faster so that which i think was a bit less than uh than the sort of 20 seconds we recommend for that You'll notice now we're dripping oil because this core is still stuck inside the machine. So that's done simply by that. I just give an extra depression on the machine and the core pops out. And then it should, the plunger should actually switch off the oil supply, even though you can see it's still dripping a little bit. So yeah, it can be a bit of a bit of a messy job, uh, core drilling, but, uh, but it works very well. So yeah, I think you can see it's a really fast, efficient way to, uh, to cut big holes in steels rather than the traditional method of uh, of twist drills or any other kind of drills like that, especially when you're looking at very thick steel like this or much thicker. As uh, as Paco referred to, the longer the drill is designed to go through bigger, you know, bigger sections of steel. So they are to suit. Of course, if you're only going through steel this big, there's no point to have a drill this size because it's a waste of material. You don't need all this material here. So you just get a shorter drill to do that. If you've got deeper drilling to do, this is when you get uh, a longer drill such as uh, such as these ones, uh, these ones here. So you can see, as I said before, we've made quite a mess uh, on the on the surface here. As you, let's have a look at the holes of drilled. Yeah, yeah. Right. So very see, clean, very, very clean holes. Yeah, they're perfect. And as I said before, you know, there's no swarf in here. It's all on the, sorry, no, no burr on the other side. It's quite smooth in my hand. And that's a real beauty of these. You don't need to then just try and condition that hole to make it a bit, uh, a bit tidier. So once you've finished drilling your holes, you've got all that oil on the surface. It's quite a good idea to try and remove that. And again, we have a product for, to help you with that, which is our, our degreasant, which is our DG500 uh, from the Sangaban one bond range if you have a quick zoom in on there martin along with these degreasing wipes that we have here these combined together will take off this oily uh, oily mess uh, straight away because you never know mate you may want to do with this surface maybe it wants to be painted after it's been bolted and with this uh, oily layer on there not going to be easy to do but with this degreaser we can get rid of that uh, pretty damn quick so spray enough on and the, and the wipes has a special pattern or honeycomb pattern that will uh, will help to remove the chips. Yeah, it really absorbs all of the dirt. Yeah, it's, it's great for that. You can clean up this whole piece with the degreaser, to be honest with you. And here we go. It's looking, once that's dried off, it'll be looking like a, a fresh new bit of steel. So you can see there, much better, much cleaner. Yeah. Again, look at the quality of the hole. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Huh? Ah, perfect zoom in from there, Martin. Yeah, you can now gauge the quality of the hole. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so, so to summarize, uh, our core drill range available in three different types of materials. So the TCT uh, for the high performance, uh, the, the plated uh, uh, high speed steel and the general high speed steel. But most of the market are just using the high speed steel just due to the cost performance ratio. If you're drilling holes all day, tungsten carbide every time. If it's uh, odd jobs, etc., the cost is an issue. It's always going to be the high speed steel, but these are the most popular. So any holes that you need to drill in, in you know, big, big diameter holes in thick steel like this, they're absolutely perfect for much, much better than twist drills, time saving, energy saving, effort saving, uh, which is always a, a big bonus for, for you. Um, Paco, anything, uh, anything to, to, to add? Yeah, just a quick comment. Yeah, one of the beauty of this machine at the score drill is that uh, you should make a, a hole in vertical in in a wall. You can you can you can stick with a magnet easily in in in, in, in vertical, and you will keep a, <laughs> a wall. Two man job, I think. I'm only on my own today, Francisco. You you didn't. If you come and join me next time, we'll we'll do that, but not today. <laughs> but no, you can. It, it, again, it has to be a, a thick section of steel, but absolutely no problem at all. This this drill will stick uh, to uh, to a wall horizontally, no problem at all. So if you have a, a steel structure you need to drill through, 
it will do it. As long as you can manhandle it into place, uh, then no problem at all to, to, to do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else, uh, Paco, or we, uh, we need to wrap up because we're just on the half an hour mark? Yeah, well, yeah, just, just to say that we have all the whole, uh, all the range of the highest speed steel core really on stock available uh, to you. Yeah. You can order and you will receive very, 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 very fast. Perfect. Okay, well, uh, for those that you are viewing live, please stay tuned for the uh, the free giveaway and the questions and answers. But for those that have joined you on uh, joined us or watching the recording on YouTube, thank you very much for joining. We'll see you next time on Norton Live. Bye bye. <laughs>